Hello, welcome to Geeks Assembled. Today we are going to discuss a pilot episode of a TV series which aired in 1990, which for me, I describe it as a phenomenon of TV, um, created by David Lynch. And of course, we are talking Twin Peaks. Um, I don't know which version of the pilot episode these guys watch, because there is a 90-minute version and there's a two-hour version. But well, it's roughly the same, what you see in both episodes. Um, so without further to do, let's go for your opening thoughts of when you first saw this episode. Anyone? Well, I would say that um, to give it context at the time for myself, I was seriously bored with television. Um, in the, the late 80s, there was just really any, nothing new or original on as far as I was concerned. Um, mostly, I would just go to the video store every day and could pick a couple of movies out to take home and watch because that's what you did back then when you rented movies. <laughs> but um, a friend of mine at work told me about this after it had been after its first series had run through, and I was like, okay. And she loaned me the um, the tape of the pilot, the, the the television broadcast of the pilot. Um, oh, which by the way, the reason there's two versions is there's the European cut which has added a somewhat of a re resolution to the film, making it not really a pilot, but a complete movie. This was done because they wanted to sell it overseas as well before, before knowing if it would be broadcast there as a series. So that's, that's why that you have a second version that has a, a about 20 minutes added to it with a, with the revelation of a killer. But uh, yeah. Uh, but no, I was just knocked out. I'd never seen anything like this on TV. I was like, this, it looks like a film. It looks like a brilliantly shot film. I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, all that uh, Seattle, wherever they filmed it, in Washington, I believe, or something. Uh, it's just, uh, it looks great. Uh, it's got, a, it's, it's an amazing pilot because it has to introduce at least like 25 characters. And it does, it does it very cleverly. It just kind of goes along and it works that way because it, it's 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 leading to a series. It's not just um, introducing a bunch of random people, and they're all interesting. They all seem to have a secret, and they all seem to be sleeping with each other in one way or another. So it's 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 a very cleverly done uh, story. I would point out too. I think he gets overlooked quite a bit. Mark Frost is actually the co-creator and did quite a bit of work on the series, but everybody always gives Lynch the credit um, because he's more, more notorious as a director. But yeah, this this is a great start to what was going to be a very good uh, series for the most part. Uh, Susan, what was your thoughts on this? Well, I feel, I feel bad for Laura Palmer. Um, she didn't deserve to die. She died too soon. She died too young. Um, I feel like the characters that surrounded her mystery were in, in, incredibly interesting, incredibly devious incredibly incredibly full of depth it is um you know that that kind of that that kind of characterization is captured a bit in broad church um in in, in current times uh, i just i really enjoyed the the story i love the 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 you know inner interaction in the between the feds and the or this one fed and and the townsfolk you know it's just like what what kind of uh animosity and and, and you know antagonism happened there and uh i loved the but i loved how they you know they they were too polite to to act that way out overtly it was that was really interesting and i loved i loved that the, that it had a cast of you know of great i mean so many amazing people so many people that you see in so much you know have done so many different things like Dondi davis i mean like like the whole he was he, or don s davis he was general hammond in stargate and like there i mean it like i was boggled by by seeing him and then uh you know Kyle McLaughlin in all of his uh, he does so many different he did so he did so many different things it was just really fun yeah 
Uh, thanks for that, Susan. And Alex, what was your take on the uh, pilot episode of Twin Peaks? Okay. Um, yeah, there might have been a fan that was going. Hopefully you're not hearing any noise now. Um, yeah, I, um, I mean, I actually like the pilot better than the rest of the series. And that's even saying the movie that I watched, the official movie. Uh, as Tim said, it was originally uh, called, uh, what was it, Northwest Passage, and I guess it was very expensive for 1990s times, and they were, the brass and other people were arguing about it back and forth as to what type of style it was and and how many elements they mixed in. I did actually like both versions. I liked the longer one better because they added a, a resolution. They didn't keep it hanging in the air but i i did like it and like susan says you have people from the mob squad you have people that are character actors you have people that you know actually have a lot of experience and it was even though i'm not a huge fan of the show i do like the pilot and i even like the weird movie the fire walk with me and now they're bringing it back again um uh, was it 25 years later so it'll be interesting if they can shock viewers again and have it be a cult again with a new audience. Um, but I mean, as I said, I did like the pilot. I liked the way they shot it. I liked the music. Um, like I said, I prefer the, the European version with, with the ending. But I like it so much, I'll even watch the pilot again. So, uh, you know, if you like it that much that you'd actually rather see that than many episodes of the series, then, uh, you know, that's why I'm here reviewing it. And like I said, I, I think it was very good for a pilot. It was very good for the time. And I guess they were trying to, I guess the cost was like 1 million, 1.1 million a, an episode or whatever. So that was actually kind of expensive for the time, especially for a new series. That Cheaper than Seinfeld. No, yeah, well, Right, for something that wasn't a comedy and something that, you know, uh, because Lynch has always been known as a movie person. He's not really known as a TV uh, person. But as I said, it's still a very good pilot, uh, still a very good story. And as I said, I, I prefer the European one, which, what, had 10 or 20 uh, more minutes added on? Um, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, totally agree with you. I mean, for me, I, I remember it. In 1990, with the uh, I was 20 years old, discovered this. I watched it from the pilot all the way through two seasons. Uh, I was hooked. Um, it was just, as Tim said, it was something different. It, the t TV then was rather dull and boring until this came along. Um, the characterizations. The acting, the story, the twist in the story, it's just uh, amazing. And as you said, with the set and actors who appeared in it along the, as the seasons went along, you know, even David Warner pops up at some point in the story. Um, yeah, um, I loved this. It was, it was just the way the community was all into intertwined. Um, and as I said, everyone had a secret. Um, and it it was uh, it was fu it was full of um, supernatural stuff later on as it went along, and uh, also the humour's there as well for me. Um, and you could tell you watch this, you can tell it's got a, a touch of David Lynch all the way through it because it's just weird and wonderful. So from that point of view, I will uh, ask. What, what, your... what yeah. I was going to say, though, uh, is, is what Lynch does here is what he's done with most of his films since uh, is that he draws you into the world he's created. And that's why yeah. it's addictive, because not not just because it's a mystery and because it's a soap opera. It's because you you want to see what happens next. You want to see what these people are going to do. Once he introduces this, this long, this great big cast. I mean, the opening credits is three minutes because the cast is so huge. And that's amazing. You're like, wow. And, it's, yeah. uh, and he does it very cleverly. I mean, the, the, the regular pilot cut without the European ending is, is only 90 minutes. And yet he introduces yeah. 25, I think 25 or 26 main char 
including the dead girl. And um, it's just it's just amazing how, how, how you get drawn into that world and you want to stay there and you want to see what happens next. You want to see who's doing what with whom and who's doing this. And you got all this other stuff going on, drug deals and all that stuff. And it's... Uh, um, uh, David Lynch knows how to use a cliffhanger. Yeah. Every every episode had a, a damn good cliffhanger. Um, the first series is like five cliffhangers at once. I mean, yeah. you've got, you yeah, the mill's on fire. You don't know what happens to so-and-so, so-and-so. Uh, Nadine's committing suicide. Cooper gets shot three times. It's like, it's like, what the hell? <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's just, brilliant. as you say, it's addictive. And I, I really did. I caught the book back in 1990 mm. and I've, I've been a fan ever since. Um, so without that, with that, um, what's your favorite characters or favorite moments in this pilot? Shall we say? You, you know what? Who I, like, who I like the most actually is Pete Martell because he's there from the beginning. He discovers the body. He's obviously very upset about it. And yet he's, he's just going about his day doing his job and his wife is a total ice queen. Um, it, it's, uh, it's just, it's cool how he, and, and this of course is Lynch's main stalwart actor. He always uses it. This is Mr. Eraserhead himself. I mean, so, uh, yeah, uh, Jack, Jack Nance. Jack yeah, Nance Jack Nance. Nance. I mean, he, he's very good in this. Uh, and, and you, you, you kind of see it from his point of view as it opens up with him discovering the body, you know? So it's just, it's, he's, he's very fun in this. Other than that, everybody's good in it, except for maybe Bobby. But that's because the actor's a bit green. He gets better as the series goes on. Uh, yes, and he's he's in the new series as well. So yeah. see if he's improved. Let's see if he's improved in twenty odd so years. Uh, <laughs> Susan, what do you think? What was your favorite character's uh, moments? Well, I loved I loved it when the the that 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 her friend's mother was hold. No, was it? It was her friend's mother holding on to. No, it was her mother holding on to her friend, and her friend suddenly changing into Laura. And then, boom! Uh, it was like uh, she she had this. Fr she saw like like somebody dangerous, and then she screamed and she screamed and she screamed. I mean that that was like that was a David Lynch moment for me. That was that was fully. Uh, it was like ah, exactly right. Alex, any favorite moments, characters? Um, well, like I said, I mean, uh, you know, I pretty much like the pilot. I did like a couple of other characters in the show, uh, Cheryl and Finn, and a couple other people. But as I said, I mean, I also remember, too, uh, you know, uh, sort of bumping into people that were actually having parties watching the show when it, you know, when they knew that it was going to air and stuff. They were disappointed a couple of times when it got preempted in the 90s. <laughs> but uh, that that was kind of interesting. I'm trying to you know watch it on ABC and see what the reactions were and see you know some people were trying to watch it. They couldn't even follow the story. Uh, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if they could follow the pilot. But uh, you know, it's always interesting to me to see other people's reactions and people that you know I didn't know directly. But as I said. Uh, it's a very interesting, very quirky series. And like I said, for 1990, for American television, it was coming into something new. Um, but to, it's your point, yeah. to, your, to your point, this is, yeah. this is one of the very first uh, water cooler programs because this is before the internet. So you wouldn't immediately go into a chat room and say, hey, Lee, what'd you think of that? It'd be yeah. like at work the next day. This is what they call the water cooler uh, type. Yes, series. Yeah. People would be yeah. standing, hey, did you check out Twin Peaks last night? Was that fucked up or what? Yes, that's, that's, I did that. <laughs> yes, I did that. Yeah. Work, yeah. And <laughs> no, but I, I mean, I actually went to some parties where, you know, over eight people were watching it on the sofa. You that didn't too. have the internet back then where you could stream it and all that stuff. So, that too. Was, I remember I watched it. I was so addicted by series two. I was watching it at work with a TV <laughs> with, a, with an aerial on it. Uh, and I worked at a, at a Domino's Pizza, oh, and I actually funny. had it up on the shelf above the make table where you're making pizzas, because uh, yeah. I would be, and I'd just be glued to the screen. These drivers would be able to, hey, check me out, check me out. I want to go home. I'm like, hey, give me, wait till the commercial. <laughs> wait till the commercial. <laughs> oh, that's funny. No, but uh, uh, like I said, it, it was interesting. Um, let me see. I don't know. I don't know if I'd have to watch it again. Um, I definitely want to see the new version. 
<clears throat> and see if it's, you know, what I remember um, or how much nostalgia it uh, brings up or if they're going to try to compete and have the original, what what they have available of the original cast to the new version and who it is... It already has a cast of at least yeah. 100 people, I think. Um, it's, wow, 100 it's, people. It's a lot, of, a lot of big name, a lot of Lynch's usual actors are in it as well. I don't know if they're cameos, but apparently Nomi Watts is going to be in it at okay. least once or twice. Uh, Laura Dern. Right. Um, yeah. Oh wow! So, uh, John John Belushi, I think. Uh, is it James Belushi? James James Belushi. Yeah. yeah. We don't know yet yeah. who's who's gonna have lead parts or or not. What what I find Kyle interesting. Kyle McLaughlin gonna be in it. Yeah, yeah. he's the, oh, he's yes. the lead. Yeah. He's what what's what I found interesting though was that this this yeah. actually wrapped filming in April of 2016. That's nearly a year ago, and I'm just wondering if it's just taking their time because. Uh, David Lynch wants to take his time putting it together with editing because mm. that's what he does. He spends a lot of time. I mean, his last film was in 2006, Inland Empire, and it's a three-hour mm. film. Mm. And I still haven't figured out what it means. <laughs> but uh, but but uh, even on the DVD, though, it comes with an, another hour and 15 minutes of, it says, like, what else happened in the film? So you're just like, okay, you, you've got this endless thing of, of thing. And I'm pretty sure that's maybe why it's taking this long to get it put on this on TV is because he wants to take his time editing what it is. Because he filmed it pretty much open ended, I believe, this series. And again, this is this time was 100 percent David Lynch and Mark Frost, the two guys that ran the original series. That series ran into trouble when they both got sidetracked doing other things like Wild at Heart for Lynch and Storyville for Mark Frost. And and. That's why it kind of fell apart in series two, not to mention well, that, that yeah. ABC put it on in the death zone on, on, yeah. on Saturday night yeah. and the Gulf War kept preempting it. Like you mentioned earlier, uh, coverage of the war kept preempting the show. So like you said, if people were sitting around their couch waiting for it to start and they say, well, we'll have to show it next week, people would be upset. So, yeah. Well, let me ask you, Tim, while we're talking about it, did you like the movie Fire Walk With Me or did you think it was just kind of... I do like a movie. I, I do like the movie. I think it's not quite Twin Peaks, though. It's a different type of movie. It's more of a a horror film about the horror of being a molested child or a molested mm -hmm. girl. Uh, and that's not what people expected when they went to see the film. Mm -hmm. uh, they wanted more Twin Peaks. And what they got was a different type of story. Uh, it's actually wow. the, the last few days of her life. And it's, it's again, more of a tragedy than a... But is that, the ending is more uplifting than some of his other films. But I mean... I would say that, that that it's a different kind of movie. Um, people that are going expecting to see a prequel to Twin Peaks are going to be disappointed. It's more about the tragedy of being a molested person. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, he, he has basically been known for making shocking, offbeat kind of movies. Uh, I mean, I do, I do like Wild at Heart, but there's not many David Lynch movies that I actually... Uh, well, I would say that I would say that Lost Highway is a masterpiece because yeah. it's um, the, the trick is to figure out what it actually means and and yeah. it, it means a lot of things but it's yeah. it's it uh, takes a few viewings. Yeah. Yeah, well, blue, yeah. blue, Vel blue Velvet's a classic. Yeah, yeah. no, I, I do actually <laughs> like Blue Velvet even though it is disturbing, um, and I like well, I like Lost Highway with uh, Robert Loja, but uh, yeah. we're getting slightly off topic, I guess, but. Uh, yeah, but I mean, he he makes very offbeat kind of. Um, kind it's, of it's it's impossible to talk about uh, yeah. Twin Peaks without getting off topic to all the other David Lynch and and Robert oh, or, or Frost true, yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, well, it'll be interesting to see the new version. Go ahead, Lee. Well, got, getting back on topic. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> As we're saying about characters and moments, uh, there's several characters in this for me. What, what make it for me? Um, Audrey Horn. What, a, mm. what a little vixen she is. Yeah, <laughs> and you only get just the merest hint of her character in this in this pilot as well because she develops yeah. as the series goes on. In this one, she's just but, a bit of a bad a bad girl. You know, like like but, look at her but, in, yeah. in, in class when it's announced over the, the loudspeaker and she's just kind of like so what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you, know, that kind you, of thing. you don't. You do you do see what she's like with because one of my favorite parts in the in the pilot is the where she goes into the room where the Norwegians are all sat. Yeah, <laughs> she just says my my best friend has been murdered, <laughs> and they just all up and leave. It's just brilliant. Um, she like she likes blowing up her father's business deal. Really, is what she was doing. Yeah, yeah. There's a few explosions later on in the series as well, um, and Carl McLachlan as um, Dale Cooper. I think is brilliant. 
is very, you wouldn't expect this to be like an FBI agent. He's very off the wall, very out there. He's, it's like, as in the Epala, it's like he's never seen trees before. Mm-hmm. As he he's said, a city what, boy. What yeah, what are those trees? I mean, you know, damn fine cherry pie. This is, you know, coffee's wonderful, which is brilliant. Uh, the yeah, way excellent uh, casting because, you know, he, he again, he's one of Lynch's regulars. He was also in mm-hmm. Blue Velvet and before that, Dune. He Lynch yeah. discovered him and used him in Dune. So, yeah. <clears throat> it's, so it's wonderful casting. You, you can take any, any of the actors, even the smaller parts. It's just wonderful. I mean, it, even Ray Wise as uh, Leland. In this, I mean, it doesn't even give anything away of what happens further down in the series. They didn't know. Just, they didn't know. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, these no. Uh, to um, did they write the final episode? What yeah. the final? Did they? The yeah, very, did they, the yeah. Final one or the one where they reveal the killer? The, where they reveal the killer. That was another problem with the series too. That actually kind of wrecked it. Was that ABC put pressure on them to reveal who the killer was? Hold on. Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I, I've always liked uh, Ray Wise. He's another character actor, and of course, you have Peggy oh, yeah. from the Mob Squad in there, too. Um, she, yeah, no, a, she, yeah, it's just yeah. amazing the, the, the amount of actors. I mean, you've got even is it Russ Tamblin. Yeah. I mean, I always remember him from when he was way young. Mm. Young, young, young. Um, <laughs> well, he was sort of a child actor, wasn't he? Mm. But. Uh, yeah, no, it was um, that. That was another thing that I that I was bringing up with the with the parties and the and the view, viewing on the couch and all that was the um, you know some people were getting very confused with all the twists and the turns and the. <laughs> I enjoyed that. Do you know, I, I really enjoy, I really enjoyed that because yeah. it sort of it sort of drew me more into the into yeah. the show. You didn't, yeah, you didn't find it as predictable, huh? No, no, because I enjoyed all the twists and turns, and you didn't expect most of the twists and turns in Twin Peaks was very unexpected. Uh, so, and that was it was fresh. Well, I mean, British British TV, you know, had had that as well. This is for American TV; it was slightly different. Uh, they, yeah, uh, they, they they were more trying to build, like you know, this is the era of Married with Children and Nine Hundred Two One Zero, the original, and all these other. You know, soap opera type of things with you know, not really good plots or really good characters. So that's the, probably why the <laughs> twists know. were were like were like the actual meat of the show. It was yeah. it wasn't it wasn't yeah, the it wasn't put in as a gag. It wasn't it put was, in as a gimmick. Right. Yeah. It had it had its uh uh a, it added the 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 sweetness and the 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 you know deviousness of the of the thing it was it, it was pretty brilliant in that it, it, for me it, it's um, it's one of the greatest american tv shows ever to be honest um, i think it's it's also rated like that over the over the pond as mm. one of the greatest tv shows made um, and mm. i totally agree with that so uh, Fuck them to do then. So, we've, we've, is there anything what what sort of did niggle at you? And you think, oh, why did they do that? Mm. Um, yeah, I mean that that's another question too. Like you mentioned, that they had to put in an ending, and I think they had what three endings? They had one for the pilot, they had one for the show, and then I remember I was watching the show. And McLaughlin was talking to the mirror and stuff, and I can't remember. Oh yeah, very yeah. last. And that—that's the other thing that I've even brought up with the with anybody that I'm talking to is, um, you know, what is it really like to film a movie or a TV show, and how many producers and how many direct? You know what I mean? Can everybody finally agree upon? You know how the ending's going to be, or how the character is going to be? Or are they going to film? more than one ending you know things like that which you don't you don't always think about when you see a movie you know some movies they do change the ending especially if i remember in the early 90s and the two in the early 2000s i actually went to some screening movies and then you had to fill out the card you know did you like the ending did you like this you know what i mean 
And I'm trying to remember because Mean Girl, you know, there was other movies that they actually changed the ending because the poll, it didn't poll. You know, yeah, but, it, oh, yeah. Yeah. they never did that with television, though. They always, they always like, you know, let the producer and the director kind of do the thing uh, the the whole way through. You know, the way that they wanted it. They except for the pressure put on them from the executives, they never really. That's the that's the difference between movies and and TV. Is like they they'll never pull the 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 people, but. You know, I, the thing that niggled at me was the was the um, they had they had um, I don't know. I th I think I saw the shorter version. They had a uh, it it seemed kind of like. Uh, Oh man, what am I trying to say here? I'll, 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 let me gather my thoughts. I'll, I'll be back with you. Right. The, the, the question, Tim, was: Was there anything what sort of niggled you with the pilot? What you thought? Why did they do that? You know? No. It's, no. Mm -mm. I didn't have a problem, <laughs> you, dude. I'm serious. I watched. I borrowed that cassette tape from my friend. Uh, I watched it that night. I watched it again that night. I watched it twice. I was that <laughs> caught up by it. I watched it again the next evening when I got home from work and I watched it again. I watched it like four times before they loaned me the rest of the series because I was that, I was that impressed with it. I was like, wow, this is really good for television. I feel like I'm watching a movie. I mean, it was that good. So um, I didn't, you know, I didn't, no, I didn't have any problem with it. I couldn't wait to see more. I wanted, like I said, he draws you in and you want to find out more about these people. You want to see what else is going on. Uh, the point I was trying to make earlier was that they never wanted to reveal the killer because they wanted that to just kind of recede into the background while other things were coming in, like other mysteries and stuff. They, the problem was ABC insisted that they that they they get rid of it because it or that they that they reveal who the killer was, and that was a mistake. It, even if Lynch has admitted since, as far as he was concerned, the show was about Laura and Cooper, and I think yeah. they're going to get a bit of that in the new series, even though Laura's dead. It's her, it's her, it's her, her mystery that refuses to go away. And he says when they, when they took that away from him, he, just, he wasn't interested anymore. Yeah. No, I, that, that's the other thing that, you know, you, you've heard me say, Tim, of, you know, uh, if you were going to produce a, you know, a movie or a TV show, how many producers would be, you know, on the payroll, on the budget? And then could everybody, you know, agree with what's being filmed or what's being, you know, I think it's all about the partnership of the two, yeah. the, the two lead writers, which is Lynch and Frost. And yeah. Frost has a has an impeccable pedigree for television. He was like behind Hill Street Blues and whatnot. Yeah. I think so. He was, in other words, this was their Lynch works best when he has a good collaborator with him, uh, yeah. who who can rein him in a little bit sometimes, but also let him go or, or put his own spin on it. And that's that's why this collaboration really worked so well. I think for a short time. I mean, the first series is nearly impeccable. There's no, I, I don't have any problem with the first. It just keeps moving and moving and moving. And then, like I said, you have this, it ends with this explosive five part cliffhanger or whatever. Uh, mm -hmm. But what Lynch did though, that pissed a lot of people off was when it came back for a full series of 22, the first, the first episode is a two hour premiere and it just drags. <laughs> it, they literally spend about 18 minutes with Cooper laying on the floor and nothing else is happening. So, I mean, it's, it's that, that's what he did. And that's him putting his, you know what? And, they, and that, that's when ABC execs started to get mad and say, why are we spending money on this thing when they're not even getting anywhere near who the, who the killer is or whatever? So, I mean, that's when all the heads started to roll or something. But, uh, yeah, that's why I'm, I'm hoping now that it's just their baby and it's for cable television, Showtime, that it, we'll get to see what they want to, want to do with it and not have any pressure from anybody. And already Lynch quit once, I believe, because remember, uh, I think Showtime execs were, 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 were being a bit uh, rude and saying that, why is your cast so old or whatever? And it's like, <laughs> hello, it's been 25 years. Everybody's going to get a little bit older. Um, so. Yeah, so right. So didn't uh, Lee and Tim, didn't we, uh, I know Tim and I saw it, uh, the video where they had all the actors going, you know, Twin Peaks without Lynch is, you know, mm -hmm. ridiculous. You know, it's not, it's not worth it. Well, see, see, yeah, seen I, as you I mentioned, saw that as well. I, yeah. I did. Yeah. Yeah. Seen, uh, seen, yeah, seen as you mentioned that the, the opening 
to season two was a two hour episode. You'll be glad to know that the opening episode of season three is a two hour episode. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mind. I'm ready for some new match because, like I said, his yeah. last film was over 10 years ago. So, I mean, let's, let's bring it on. <laughs> but, um, you, you did mention earlier, you know, to find out who the killer was. Um, thanks to Tim during the week who pointed it out to me because I'd never noticed it before and I never knew that um, he was in the mirror. <laughs> he was in the mirror with him. <clears throat> you know what? I'd never noticed that either as much as I watched that pilot because I read about it recently on the internet. And guess what? Well, the reason that is there is an actual mistake. mistake that guy, yeah, I've read, yeah. The guy that plays Bob is a step dresser. Yeah. He works for the company. That, and, and what happened was Lynch films that scene with, with Grace Zabriskie on the couch when she's, you know, waking up and screaming at, at what was either the necklace in the ground or remembering Bob at the foot of the bed. But in the mirror behind her, you see a picture, you see his head. And um, the, Lynch's assistant said, oh, we need to redo it because uh, so-and-so was in the mirror. He's like, no, 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 leave it. And that's what inspired him to create that character and use him for that international version that they filmed the, the, the rest of it for. And later in the series, he became that mystery guy. Uh, and uh, it, that's, that's how Lynch works. He does that. If, he, if, a, if an idea occurs to him while he's filming, he'll throw the script away and say, okay, we're going to do this instead. You know, and <laughs> that's, that's where that came from. And I was really surprised when I saw that the other day because I hadn't watched the pilot in years. Uh, and I had read that it was there on the internet. I forgot about it. And I went back and looked at it. I said, oh, wow, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have noticed it until you mentioned it the other day. And I was sat there waiting. And there he was in the mirror. And she sprang up. <laughs> and and uh, then I went on the net and had a look. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a mistake. We kept it in and he gave him the job of becoming Bob. But also as well, he kept in quite a few mistakes. There was the flickering neon lights in the mortuary. Yeah. They, they, they were faulty that's lights. His, I think that's one of his trademarks, though, or he's used it again since because he's always yeah, got yeah, well, flickering. He, he kept, yeah, he kept it in because it, it added a bit more atmosphere, but there were faulty lights that was yeah. going to get them fixed. <laughs> well, well, I like, I, how, yeah. I like how, sorry, I like how, how the guy in the scene uh, and, and uh, Cooper said, Cooper's, what is he? Uh, the guy's explaining, and Cooper says something, can you leave us, please? The guy says, oh no, my name's. And he goes, no, no, can you leave us, please? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he left, he left the mistake in there. I guess the, the actors yeah. got confused, and one guy was asking, the, the actor responding thought he was saying, what's your name? Where, yeah. like, Tim was saying, could you leave us, please? And they got, somehow it got confused, and he, but Lynch left. I think that was scripted. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't edited out or, or you know, improved. It was, so, yeah, I remember I was watching that, and I'm going, is this a mistake? Because it seems like there's two conversations going on here. And I wonder, wonder. Just for me to get the best results, you just leave the mistakes in, yeah. as you can tell. It as you can tell if you watch these casts. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. By all accounts, he's very good with actors too. He hired Cheryl Lee just to play a corpse, um, and um, she was she had no acting skills at all at that point. She was going to school to become an actress, but he says, "Look, this is what I'm going to do, Cheryl." He, he picks out actors out of photos. I mean, he pretty much discovered Naomi Watts, too, in the same way. And gave, I mean, he gave her a career, uh, but that was later. But um, no, he, 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 he says, I'm going to wrap you up in plastic and put you in the cold water. <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> okay. So she ends up playing a corpse for, uh, for, for the better part of the, 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 the pilot and a few episodes. Uh, and then he, he, he was so enamored with her, he gave her a party, created the cousin that came to town that looked just like her. And yeah. that was that was his play on the Hitchcock thing, uh, Vertigo, where you have the actress changes her hair color and becomes a different character or whatever. I'm not sure what it what it meant, but uh, yeah. that was that was that's what he does. And he, he also with the creation of this show, he also well mainly gave the job to another person. Um, was it Angelo Badalamenti? Oh, the music, who, yeah. Who created the iconic theme tune? Um, mm -hmm. That you know, with the first dum dum, dum dum. Wow, you just you just you you're there, right? You just wow. Oh wow, Laura the Palmer's music, here. The music <laughs> is, the best, is one of the best things about the show is the whole series as well. The music is incredible. Um, he had worked with uh, Angelo B, we should call him, on uh, Blue Velvet as well. There's he he does quite a bit of the music in there, and um, then 
of course it was a no-brainer and yeah this is all original score they also brought it you know that other collaborator his the, the singer julie cruz and right. she, yeah. she she shows up on screen a few times doing some of her songs and that's 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 really good it's really the music yeah. is that's another reason i was caught up and i was like god this is amazing you know the music julie, is perfect yeah. very good music Ju yeah. Ju julie julie cruz is in the new series as well um yeah. is, is is susan steaming up under there no, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> great little poem. Yeah, the uh, yeah, that that's another thing I noticed with the parties because you didn't have the internet and all that back then. Some people wanted to watch every single second, and other people I noticed were only listening to the dialogue. And then some people were you know hearing it as background noise and really weren't watching uh, the show. And well, I know that of, yeah. Well, this I'm sorry. The first shows, this is one of the first shows that you really had to pay close attention. You were afraid you were going to miss something. And so yeah, you would yeah, watch yeah. episodes again and again, thinking, you know what? I didn't catch that the first time. I'm going to watch it again. Yeah. This show was also. You'll, sorry, go ahead. You'll, you'll most, you say you'll mostly still re watch and re watch, and you'll find something new every time you do watch it. And I hope, I'm hoping that the new series is going to be like easy. Yeah, maybe, this this, maybe this is why he's, he's spending so much time. Sorting out, yeah. yeah, yeah, but also as well, some of the actors have passed, um, passed away since he started filming. I know he did. Well, the good, some the of good them news is, well, at least for the two that have died recently, the good news is that this, like I said, this wrapped back in April of last year, yeah. and their parts are in there already. I already know Miguel well, Ferrer is in it. Um, and yeah, probably, yeah. Well, sorry, he, he did, he did, he did delay the production because of Russ um, Tam. Tampling having open heart surgery, so mm -hmm. hopefully Dr. Jacoby. So, but apparently he's fit and well and he's, he's in it now. So, yeah. so well, I mean, again, wasn't it wasn't it April nineteenth? What was it? April fourth or something like that? Nineteen ninety that it was it the was, pilot, and now what is it? Twenty twenty five, twenty six years later. Yeah, it's almost April. So I don't know if they're gonna. It's you know, it's as it's, 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 it's if it's they me. planned it. It's as if they planned it when they said, I'll see you in 25 years. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's very clever. Um, I was just going to say also, uh, this show was also very influential. I think it kind of changed the way a lot of TV shows were made at the time because it was its definite influence uh, on things that followed, like Northern Exposure and especially the X-Files. I think yeah. the X-Files really benefited from this mm -hmm. setting setting the way, you know, kind of because... Oh, yeah. the, that, that show kind of picked up a lot of the ideas, especially towards the latter half of, of the second series. Because remember, they're getting into the whole thing about aliens and out the cave and all, the, all that stuff. And the lodge itself, is it an alien place? Is it a, you know what I mean? So uh, the X-Files kind of picked up the, the torch and went running with some of those ideas. And I think that, that had it been made today as a new thing, it would have been so much better because, you know, the good thing about cable TV shows is that they're limited. You get 12, 13 episodes. And that's all you need for, to, to tell a good story and, and, and move on until the next series, if you get one. Here, they were under pressure when they got the go-ahead for a series two to come up with 22 hours of television. And I don't think people like Lynch are ready for that kind of thing on that you know, treadmill of getting, getting the product pumped out. He's more of a visionary director. Frost was probably used to it, but I mean, they both kind of walked away and did other things as well uh, and left it in the hands of, of other people. So I think that's why the kind of fell apart in series two. There are a lot of episodes that are just hard to watch because they just meander around. There's some really bad subplots. Like remember James with <laughs> with the, the married rich lady or whatever. Uh, he goes off. And has, <laughs> that, those were terrible. I mean, it wasn't the same thing at all. Well, I mean, again, um, you know, I just remember that that's one of the things I remember about the 90s is all those people watching or trying to watch Twin Peaks. And some people loved every single second and other people didn't. And I remember uh, some people actually left. They were like, oh, this is too much. They, they couldn't, just, just like the 18, what was it? You said what, 18 minutes of, uh, of McLaughlin's character laying down and some people just gave up. They just, no, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so it was very interesting. I said, wow, you guys are getting really worked up over a new TV show, but okay. You know, I'm a fan of TV shows too, so I can't really, I, I can't really judge. But you know, if you really, <laughs> but, if you really want to get this upset yeah. about it, you know. <laughs> yeah. But but for but for me, if if like for the pilot, if it grabs you straight away, then right. Lynch and Frost, Lynch and Frost have done the job 
well. Yeah. And and it did. It, it grabbed. It, well, it grabbed nearly everybody because as Tim said, everybody was talking about it. Right. And mm-hmm. that is a sign of a good show. Yeah. People talk about it. It's a good show. Mm-hmm. Um, so on that note, if we if anybody else has anything else to say, um, shall we go on to final thoughts and scoring? Hmm. Yeah. Okay then. So let's do this then. So, uh, Susan, what's your final say on stay on the matter and uh, what's your score for the pilot episode of Twin Peaks? <clears throat> All right. Well, my my final say was uh, about the what was niggling at me was some of the things that that you guys had said. Like they they had to resolve the the issue of the killer. They had to resolve the issue of the infidelity and the, 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 those sorts of things. Um, the, any of the rev- resolution really wasn't necessary because some of some <clears throat> other of Lynch's works, you just start off at, at, a, at, a, at a difficult point and then you, you have like, you know, you go through, through the plot and then it's, it ends on a difficult point. So they, they, they never you know things are never resolved exactly anyway um that's that was my niggling thing the 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 thing that was uh my final say about it is that i really enjoyed watching it again i feel really uh excited to to see the new series and um yeah and and I guess I'll give it a 9.5 out of 10. It was pretty, pretty amazing. Thanks, Susan. Um, Alex, what's your final say on the matter? Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll watch the pilot again and again. I like the pilot a lot, both versions, uh, especially the longer version. Um, and I'm willing to give the new show a try. Uh, the first season was very good. Uh, the pilot, I'll give it a 9.5 as well. Uh, and like I said, I'd, I'd like to see what they do with the new the new version on cable. Brilliant. And uh, Tim, what's your final say? <clears throat> One of the best things I've ever seen on television. So I give it a ten. It's an easy ten for me. I, I like I said, I got the tape from the friend, watched it again and again and again. Watched the rest of the series, went back and watched it again. So I mean, this was I think. This was great for television because it was something different, something new, and a new way of narrative storytelling, which hadn't been done yet. And it, like I said, I think it's been very influential even to today with the way the way TV works sometimes. Um, and I'm just happy it happened because I'm I'm happy it's coming back. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, so so much. Um, I've got to agree. I think it's one of the great, greatest TV shows I've made. I've, I've said it in the cast early on. I love this. I really enjoyed re-watching the pilot this week. Um, I'm hoping that I can fit in the rest of the episodes before season three starts now because I think I am going to do a Twin Peaks marathon. Um, and I'm hoping in season three, 20 or so years later, that some of the unanswered questions might get answered now so there might be some resolve there but um for me i enjoyed it thoroughly it's a, uh, it's a 10 for me as well i loved it uh, it's, it's brought back great memories re-watching this uh, it's, it's i've it's rekindled the fire for me for uh, twin peaks so on that note we will say goodbye so please like dislike comment below Subscribe to our channel if you want to see any more you know, videos like this. Um, check us out on Twitter. We've got our Tumblr. Tumblr. Um, and until next time, we'll be seeing you.